Hello and welcome back to High Fell. Um, the journey around these motors in TT120 locomotives continues and today really pleased to be sharing with you something. This is actually a part of a uh, development process. So I've previously done some videos on changing the brushes, putting carbon brushes in. A couple of people have mentioned about cordless motors. There is an existing kit out there. However, um, a bit of a leading light in the hobby, particularly around what can and can't be done um, and usually proving that things can be done. Richard from This Way Works has been in touch and said, I have been developing a cordless motor kit for these locomotives and he has sent it over to me for completely unbiased testing. So the whole point purpose of this is going to have a look and see what the kit is that uh, Richard's come up with so far. Uh, we're also then going to install it in William Whitelaw, uh, which is the locomotive I replaced the brushes for the brushes out of the existing BE style eBay motor. So I'm going to put that one to one side because I've already got one with a brand new of one of those motors going and we've also got the one running with the carbon brushes. So the idea is have a look and see what's in the kit. Um, so get it installed and get some miles on it and see how well it performs. And then I'll be updating Richard on how things are going. This is a no holes barred. No one's gonna be giving anybody any favors. He said, look, if it's rubbish, it's rubbish. So, you know, let's get that out there. I doubt it will be, because I think a lot of people are familiar with the work that Richard's done already, uh, particularly around the TT models. And um, it's pretty impressive stuff. So getting into what the kit that Richard sent over is, straight away, you can see that this is a, a much, neater idea to fit because it's actually coming pre-installed with a worm drive. Notice it is also in nylon so that means that uh, working on the motors, so the, the existing gears, we shouldn't have any uh, differential of material wear issues or anything like that which is quite good. Um, it is a cordless motor but it is substantially bigger than the ones that have been offered in an alternative kit. The other change is that the packing pieces, uh, these have been specifically designed to locate the motor and quite nicely, uh, and again, it just shows the attention to detail. I know Richard puts into everything he does. There's an up and a down actually written into the, uh, the print. Now, again, these are these are developments, these are prototypes, and this is very much the uh, the very first one that's been done. Uh, so there the will be, or possibly, changes to make. Um, so that's really where it is. We're going to just, I'm just going to do a dry fit before I unsolder this motor. So you can see, so we have one that's marked down, and that is going to locate in there. The motor itself, one of the advantages of this size of motor is that this is actually a perfect fit for the space. Uh, the other kit that other people might be familiar with, the uh, the motor is quite small and so it needs quite a lot of packing around it and also you have to glue that to the actual motor itself. Uh, this will fit into here with a little tab towards the back so that the existing motor mount will fit on and that goes in there, which has also included some pieces of shrink heat shrink there um i've already got them on my wiring here so uh, i'm just going to identify which is the positive on the motor and then we shall get this installed so here we go uh motors installed it really is very very simple um i haven't shown you that process because you've seen it uh, we do it a few times simply all i've had to do is tin the contacts on the new motor so that's applying some solder ready to take the uh, the connection wise. I've already pre-marked the positive. I've identified the positive on the cordless motor, the new one. And uh, then desolder this motor and reattach, make sure that the insulation goes back on and then just refitted the uh, the motor cap, this, uh, this bracket on top. Um, one thing which I did notice is the difference in size. So I'm presuming that uh, the this has been uh, done to basically match the motor gearing to it something similar that's something that we're going to have a play around with and we'll 
I'll put this in as it is without changing any of the defaults on the um, uh, on the DCC system so that we have a direct comparison for how the OE spec motor runs to this coreless one. Uh, there may be some changes to CVs to be done, but the value of doing it like this will be we'll be able to identify whether this is successful for DC operation because of course you can't really change motor characteristics in DC so easily. So the next thing to do is I'm going to do a run without the body on just to make sure that everything works and then reassemble and uh, William Whitelaw will be on mainline duty and hauling trains and doing everything that I want it to do. And the important thing is we'll be keeping an eye on the amount of hours the loco does. People might have noticed I was fairly sure how many hours the existing motors were doing before they failed and that's because I do try and keep a tally. Um, it also helps with maintenance. That's just the engineer in me. You're always looking ahead of what the duty cycle is, uh, what the service life is, when maintenance should be done, things like that. Just because it's a small model locomotive makes no difference. Right, so to the layout. So, moment of truth. Um, I use a, a Dynamis uh, regular DCC system to control the locos whilst I do actually use the app for programming for anything that's got the uh, HM7000 decoders in, which is what we're running in here. So let's give this uh, a go. So speed step one and two. I'm just going to gradually increase. That certainly runs very smoothly. The big advantage of these cordless motors, of course, is the lack of cogging, in other words, it's just a really smooth operation. Just going to remove the camera from, or the phone, that's posh as an actual camera, and from the tripod. So we can see the logo making its way around. This is now set at maximum speed. I actually have the acceleration CV set to a value of 40. I think based on the performance there, I will need to give this a little bit more juice. So we'll do that via the app. Um, because the app is on the same phone that I'm filming it on, we should have to bring that to a stop, do that part. And what I'll do is I'm going to actually give the, the motor uh, back its full CV setting of uh, on max at 255 and see, uh, and see how we get on with that. So I've just reset the maximum speed to 255. I normally run um, A4s, A3s, A1s, things like that. I've actually curved the maximum to 195, which is a much closer to scale speed. So we've now given this maximum speed set 126, if you're familiar with the uh, DCC code decoder uh, control systems, that is actually the maximum it will give you out of the, although it says it's 128. Well, it runs smoothly. But I'm going to say that's too slow, so uh, that's going to have to be something we're going to revise. The next thing I do is I'm going to do a calculated speed test. So we'll see what the scale speed of it is.
So here we are, we're actually approaching 30 hours of running and it's been done in some quite testing conditions. So the Locos run with up to 10 coaches on uh, their weighted ones because the illumination system that I use, uh, you know, uses batteries and it does have a little bit more weight. I tried going to 12 actually and found that it was stretching the kinetic uh, coupling system and so we're starting to get some derailments. The motor, if anything, is just getting smoother and smoother. Um, it's certainly not displaying any of the issues that we've encountered with the standard equipment motor. Temperature control is excellent. It's running within exactly the same margins as the original motor as well. So nothing to worry about there. Some people will be aware that that can be a problem for cordless motors. They can't dissipate their heat because they don't have the iron core to act as a heat sink certainly not proving to be a problem with this motor and i think a lot of that is down to the fact it's that larger size if you remember it's virtually the same size as the m20 um other things well um i did also find that by resetting the decoder back to the factory standard settings so we had the full cv top speed of 255 uh, on the cv setting that was uh, certainly something it needed but also something which I'd omitted, or rather I'd forgotten about on the uh, on the first video, was that the um, the decoder was calibrated to work with a three pole original equipment motor. And as everybody knows, like motors are all slightly different. So once I'd actually calibrated the decoder with this motor, after about an hour's running in, it perked things up even more. So this is the kind of speed that I would run an Express at normally, but I'm just going to take this up to full throttle and this is easily capable of um, a scale speed of 100 miles an hour which to be honest with you is the sort of speed that trains were doing I know Mallard did 126 but it was on one occasion and it did break itself as well doing it uh, so for a model railway it's probably too fast um, but reliability is the key and uh, and smooth running so I think we have a, another solution to the motor issue. Um, certainly I think this one is well worth considering because it's a quality product. We're not just swapping components for the same as we know fail. Right, well, I'll put some links into in the description to Richard's eBay page, because uh, it's Richard at This Way Works that's been responsible for uh, putting this all together. Um, he asked me to do some completely independent testing. I have no financial benefit from how it goes for Richard. I hope it goes well because he does do some really good stuff. Um, we've also been working on some other little upgrades for various Hornby TT120 locos, and we'll be doing some videos on those. Thank you very much for watching. Do remember to like and subscribe. It just means that more people can get to see some of the things that are going on and how we're attending some, some of the fixes. I'm sure the people at Hornby are watching as well. Um, do keep safe, happy modelling, and um, any thoughts, please pop those in down in the comments. And uh, obviously keep it complimentary if you don't mind. And so goodbye from me and from William Wylaw.